Howdy folks, this is a Phoenix Evolution from Banggood. This is a Phoenix 2000, so I'll be able to do a direct comparison between these two models. Now what's the difference? Phoenix 2000 has a 2 meter wingspan. The Phoenix Evolution is smaller and bigger at the same time. The Phoenix Evolution has the option of a 1600 millimeter wingspan or a 2600 millimeter wingspan uh, by inserting a one meter uh, center section in the wing. Now that makes it a really big wingspan and uh, should be a great thermal glider. Here it is packed in the box. Uh, it's not particularly well protected, but it survived okay. Okay, enough of that. Now straight away I can see the rudder is a lot bigger than the straight Phoenix, which I like. Horizontal stabilizer is identical, but has some good reinforcing in there. These are all the wing joiners, wing spars. Uh, here's the 1600 wingspan, and here's the center section that makes it into the 2.6 meter wingspan with the flaps included in the center section. Lovely PVC fuselage. I really like these from Valantex. Uh, interestingly, it comes with a, an XT60 connector, which is good. I won't have to change that over. It seems to have a little, little bit of ballast weight in there as well. The fuselage looks to be identical to the Phoenix 2000 and there's a bag of bits and pieces, wing joiner, folding prop, spare nose comb, nuts and bolts. All right, ready to go. These things are really easy to put together too. It's really just bolting a few things together. So let's do it. I'm going to go straight for the 2.6 meter version. So we just take the wing spars and slot it all together. Very quick and easy. Connect up the servo lead. Now the same for the other side. Bingo, there we have a 2.6 meter wing. What a monster. This tape here is a bit dodgy. Yeah, it's sort of just slapped down with folds and wrinkles and things. I'm sure we can fix that up a bit better. So we can see the Phoenix 2000 wing cord is identical to the Evo wing cord. This end section to here is absolutely identical and the center section is the same cord all the way through and over to the other end. Now we have these little uh, joiner tabs for the joining the center section to the outer section of the wings. Same for each end and these are put together with screws you just have to get the right length screw to fit you wouldn't want to tighten them down too much because it's sort of just squishing foam really. And I can't imagine undoing this and changing over at the field really. Now I'm putting the rudder control rod on and that's on the wrong side. As I found out later on, you have to do it on the other side. Elevator control horn. Now the plastic bracket to mount the uh, horizontal and vertical stabilizers. They're very easy, just slot them together, put the long black thin uh, metal threads through to hold that in. That will just rip out in a decent crash, I'm sure. And then there's a bracket that goes in the bottom and little screws to hold them all together. It's not all that securely mounted, I don't think. Uh, it'd probably be a good idea to add a bit of tape to that front section of the vertical stabilizer. That would stabilize it up a fair bit. Now I'm putting the rudder control horn on the correct side. Connecting up the push rod. Clevis pins are all oh, very small and weak. Not really ideal. Now this bottom part of the rudder, it's the same with all these Phoenix style planes. There's no hinge. It really does need a hinge on that bottom section there, but it's not provided. It still works okay, but uh, could be better. Control horns onto the flaps and ailerons now. Pretty standard stuff. Ideally, they would uh, need a wider base. Uh, I may do something about that later on because they eventually just pull through the foam. Servo arm onto the servo. Make sure it's centered up before you do this. There's a pre-drilled hole in the servo arm, which for the flaps, I'd probably be better to use the outer hole for a bit more movement. 
and I'm shortening the flap control rod. I have the flap servo uh, in its back extremity using a servo tester. Then I shorten the push rod length so that the flap is level with the trailing edge of the wing when the servo is in the back position. And then you get full down movement of the flap using the full movement of the servo. Snaking all the wires through to the front. At the moment I've got the flaps on a wire lead and ailerons on separate channels. That way I can dial in crow braking. The wing mounting plate goes on top and four screws, four bolts to go through there. For slope sawing I would change that to a rubber band tie down because they get uh, torn out fairly easy on a rough landing. And those connecting bolts are, are pretty crude. It'd be better if they were recessed just to uh, stop the drag. Mounting the prop, same as all the other Phoenix and Volantec setups. I'm using a six channel receiver uh, because that's all I had left at the moment. So the flaps have to go on a wire lead. Time for a run up. Actually, first of all, I'll um, calibrate the ESC. Now give it a bit of a run up. I always tend to, when I do that, I often tend to catch the um, cloth cover that I've got there. Time for a uh, peak draw test and it's only just over 15 amps it doesn't feel all that powerful at all I hope it's going to be strong enough to get the glider up to height we shall see so I've got flaps and crow braking ailerons there's a bit of thrust there we shall see anyway it's a good looking glider with a great big wing so it'll be fun to see how it goes thanks for watching